Hello, welcome back to Honeydew Chapter 1, The Best Christmas Present in the World. Let's continue reading. Dearest Connie, I write to you in a much happier frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened that I must tell you about at once. We were all standing to in our trenches yesterday morning, Christmas morning. It was crisp and quiet all about. As beautiful as morning as I've ever seen, as cold and frosty as a Christmas morning should be. I should like to be able to tell you that we began it, but the truth, I'm ashamed to say, is that Fritz began it. First, someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite. Then they were calling out to us from across the man's land. Happy Christmas, Tommy! Happy Christmas! When we got, when we had got over the surprise, some of us shouted back, "Same to you, Fritz. Same to you." I thought that I would be that. We all did, but then suddenly, one of them was up there in the grey, red coat and waving a white flag. "Don't shoot, lads!" Someone shouted, and no one did. Then there was another Fritz up on the pep. Parapet and another. Keep your heads down, I told the man. It's a trick, but it wasn't. One of the Germans was waving a bottle above his head. It is Christmas Day, Tommy. We have snaps. We have sausage. We meet you. Yes, but this time there were dozens of them walking towards us across Norman's land and not a rifle between them. Little Private Morris was the first up. Come on, boys. What are we waiting for? And then there was no stopping them. I was the officer. I should have stopped them there and then, I suppose. But the truth is that it never even occurred to me I should. All along their line in ours, I could see men walking slowly towards one another. Grey coats, khaki coats meeting in the middle and I was one of them. I was part of this. In the middle of the war, we were making peace. You cannot imagine, dearest Connie, my feelings as I looked into the eyes of the Fritz officer who approached me with hand outstretched. Hans Wolf, he said, gripping my hand warmly and holding it. I am from Dusseldorf. I played a cello in the orchestra. Happy Christmas. Captain Jim Mefferson, I replied, and a happy Christmas to you too. I am a school teacher from Dorset in the west of England. Ah, Dorset, he smiled. I know this place. I know it very well. We shared my rum ration and his excellent sausage. And we talked. Connie, how we talked. He spoke almost perfect English. But it turned out that he had never set foot in Dorset, never even been to England. He had learned all he knew of England from school and from reading books in English. His favorite writer was Thomas Hardy, his favorite book, Far From the Madding Crowd. So out there is no man's land we talked of, Bathsheba and Gabriel Oak and Sergeant Troy and Dorset. He had a wife and one son born just six months ago. As I looked about me, there were huddles of khaki and grey everywhere, all over no man's land, smoking, laughing, talking, drinking, eating. Hans Wolf and I shared what was left of your wonderful Christmas cake, Connie. He thought the marzipan was the best he had ever tasted. I agreed. We agreed about everything, and he was my enemy. There never was a Christmas party like it, Connie. Then someone, I don't know who, brought out a football. Great coats were dumped in piles to make gold pots, posts. And the next things we knew, it was Tommy against Fritz out in the middle of Norman's land. Hans Wolf and I looked on and cheered, clapping out hands and stepping, stamping our feet. To keep out the cold as much as anything, there was a moment when I noticed our breaths mingling in the air between us. He saw it too and smiled. Jim Macpherson, 
he said after a while. I think this is how we should resolve this for a football match. No one dies in football match. No children are orphaned. No wives become widows. I prefer cricket, I told him. Then we Tommies could be sure of winning probably. We loved at that and together we watched the game. Sad to say, Connie Fritz won. Two goals to one. But as Hans Wolf generously said, our goal was wider than theirs. So it wasn't quite fair. The time came and all too soon when the game was finished. The snaps and the rums and the sausage had long since run out and we knew it was all over. I wished Hans well and told him I hoped he would see his family again soon, that the fighting would end and we could all go home. I think that it was every soldier wants on both sides. Hans Wolf said, Take care, Jim McPherson. I shall never forget this moment, nor you. He saluted and walked away from me slowly, unwillingly. I felt he turned away just once and then became one of the hundreds of grey-coated men drifting backwards their trenches. That night, back in our dugouts, we heard them singing a carol and singing it quite beautifully. It was style nashed, silent night. Our boys gave them a rousing chorus of wild shepherds. Shepherds watched. We exchanged carols for a while and then we fell asleep. We had had our time of peace and goodwill, a time I will treasure as long as I live. Dearest Connie, by Christmas time next year, this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible memory. I know from all that happened today how much both armies long for peace. We shall be together again soon. I'm sure of it. Your loving Jim. Here another comprehension check. Five questions. You have to answer this. And it will send me your uh, 